Is there anything else on treatments? Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, no, but I, I really do think that what I was telling you about monitoring and being able to have this new technology Right now, the problem is everyone is measuring sleep with their watch. I'm sure you all have this ling, ling, ling. And we know that it doesn't really work very well because it measures activity. So if you don't move, it says you sleep because it just can't measure your brain activity. But now there's some new devices that can measure brain activity and that you can wear at home and the data could be directly sent to, the, you know, to, uh, to a clinician. And I really hope that in the next few years, we'll be able to have people really wear these things for several days. And we'll really see that will be useful, not only for potentially diagnosing patients, you know, understanding really what's the nature of their sleep attacks and, and so forth. So when they're spaced out, what's happening in their brain, uh, but also potentially titrate the drug to really see that it's really helping the patients on their actual symptoms. So I'm, I'm very positive. Uh, I think the, the development of new technology is also going to really help a lot of patients to get better treated. Because often we, we just uh, are working in the dark, you know, we just titrate. And some people, including myself, we are not always very good judges of how we feel. It's very difficult to, to judge really completely how you feel. Uh, so that's why, you know, of course, when, when I talk to patients, I, I often like if certainly in children, it's very helpful to talk to the parents because sometimes the perception of the patient is different. You know, very often patients with narcolepsy underestimate their symptoms. They oh, I don't have cataplexy anymore, but in fact, you see them having cataplexy all the time. And so having an objective measure is really helpful. And I'm really hoping that will help to treat better patients as well. So it's not only drugs, I think devices are going to help a lot. That's exciting. I didn't, yeah, it's great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so I wanted to ask you a question that was my favorite question we got back in 2018 when we did our broadcast, which was, uh, what keeps you up at night and what energizes you to get up in the morning? <laughs> right now? <laughs> so, uh... What keeps me up at night? I mean, I mean, for narcolepsy patients or personally? Just like, well, I'll, I'll go first. How about that? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. For the narcolepsy community, I would say what keeps me up at night is, I think, worrying about whether we're doing enough on the advocacy front. And um, I know we already do, doing a lot and we're doing more and more. And I'm so proud of that. But I just um, continue to think like, you know, um, we focus a lot of our efforts at NIH as far as the uh, NINDS. Uh, it's just one of the institutes there. And now Dr. Mignot's research is actually more, um, you know, in, in immunology, which is actually a different um, department or institute at NIH. And yes. we haven't focused um, our efforts on that as much. So that's what kind of keeps me up at night is like, are we doing enough um, to keep up with, uh, you know, some of that, even though I know we're doing a lot. Um, and then the thing that energizes me to get up in the morning is I'm super excited to be working a lot more and, and actually even talking to Dr. Mignot recently about um, social support. And I just think that um, the social experience of narcolepsy has been under-recognized. Um, a little bit like how Dr. Mignot, you said, like we thought like the brain was the thing, you know, and then you realize there's the body. And then I would say there's the body. And then there's also like all the people around the person with narcolepsy. And I think that the, you know, family and friends and the impact that a community and society has on our experience with narcolepsy is, is underrated. So um, I'm really excited and energized about seeing what kind of social support, um, you know, enhancements we can uh, do to help people more in the future. So there's my answer. So what's okay. yours? So I, that's, that's a good point. Yes. I would say that uh, definitely what keeps me at night is the funding. It's just like, you know, we always are struggling. We have to write these grants and they get rejected by people who don't know what they are talking about. I'm so sorry. But, you know, for example, I told you this HLA DQB10602, the lifetime I submit on my grant to NIH. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of studies that have shown that it's like 97% that it's really all the same disease. And one of the reviewers said, oh, but you know, the disease, narcolepsy is complicated. It's not just one mechanism for the narcolepsy type one. And it's just, you know, so you, you have people review your grant, you take nine months, months 
of writing it, you submit it and then you have people who don't know anything that spend 10 minutes and destroy it. And then you read it and you say they are completely incompetent and you have no way of doing anything. That's really hard. And of course, now I, I, I should say that uh, my lab would have died pretty much if I not have had help from patients with narcolepsy, as well as I should recognize Jazz Pharmaceuticals. They have been giving me some unrestricted kind of gift, you know, to, and without that, I don't think my lab would be able to continue. And right now, unfortunately, it's, it doesn't look like the Jazz is going to continue at least right now. So of course, what keeps me at night is I may have to fire people and, and, and stop the research. Uh, you know, I resubmitted a grant and we have to wait. So yes, that's a constant struggle of, an, of, of, of researchers. And what's very frustrating too is, for me, it's easier to get funding in other areas. So my solution would be to work on Alzheimer's disease. Everyone works on Alzheimer's disease and it's easy to get money and then I will do something else. But nobody cares about narcolepsy. Nobody knows anything about narcolepsy. So reviewers don't care. That's... It's to, it seems to be so unfair. So yes, it keeps me, um, you know, uh, up at night is my, my own lab. And of course, also you're personally invested with all these students, they work super hard like me. And it's so hard, you know, to, to see how they are beaten up by the system. Uh, you really have to be a saint to be a researcher. I mean, I, <laughs> I have to say, but anyway, then, what energized me the most, I mean, I have to say still the, the new agonist. I mean, the, I, I'm so excited for patients, you know. If it works as well as it looks like, I mean, this is going to be a, sh a real change for a lot of people. And I think we're very close to really making a dramatic change in the diagnosis and the treatment of this disease. That will be so profound that people who have narcolepsy won't have the same life that people who have had it today. And I mean... When you think about that, it's just unbelievable. I mean, it just, you know, I have a smile like this because, you know, people, all this suffering that will be gone, I think is, is, is for generation. You know, it's not just now, it's going to be forever. And that's what's really exciting about research too, is that not only you can do a lot of good for a lot of people, but also there is this discovery process, which is really amazing. You know, it's a, uh, discovering something new is there's nothing more exciting. So I don't have any problem being excited, but I have to say that uh, the funding is always kind of, <laughs> I'm yeah. a little bit like the Jack O'Malley, you know, I come up from a hole and then I get an older hit and then I go to society. But I'm We're still thankful. very enthusiastic every morning, yeah, to, uh, to work, yeah. I really like how the um, birds started chirping uh, behind you as you started talking about what made you hopeful. So I feel like the yes. birds are on our side. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that no, was kind I, of I think, it has never been a better time for patients with narcolepsy. The future is really bright. Uh, absolutely. I mean, with our new treatments, of course, you can never tell. There could be something bad about that treatment, and then we'll go back to square zero. Not zero, but we'll have to, to wait for another drug. But even if the drug from Takeda you know, is not working, there's several other companies that are working. So it will happen, I'm pretty sure because there's nothing fundamentally flawed about the concept. And it seems that the drug is well tolerated. So it will happen. Uh, of course, I hope it will happen the next two years and not the next five years. Uh, but I think it's really exciting. And then the understanding of narcolepsy, I think uh, I'm really hoping we'll have a blood biomarker and that we can really diagnose people very quickly and treat them immediately. Um, so I hope that narcolepsy would be a uh, I was going to say a thing of the past, but you know, uh, I mean, it's some of these things we forget, but before antibiotics, people were dying, you know, in childbirths like flies, and now it never exists. So, I mean, right. what I hope is one day narcolepsy will be just something that people treat and you can live a completely normal life. Yeah, and I think that was really humbling for me to realize when I first started treatment in 2007, you know, I didn't like, you know, I was like, oh, these treatments are so challenging. And then 
um, when I started studying the history um, and realizing that, you know, how many people had fought to even make those treatments available for people oh, yeah. like me to be diagnosed in 2007 and to then be like, oh, these treatments are horrible. Like other people fought so hard for, to make those available. Um, and, and, and they have been, you can see already the progress, I think, um, in, oh, yes. in how far we've come. So that's got to be the exciting thing is that we can see that that'll happen even more so. Let's hope. 